representing our 2014 BFA degree candidates is cartooning major Molly Ostertag. <laughs> Born upstate in Rhinebeck to two teachers, Molly transferred to SVA from Bard when she realized how serious she was about her cartoon goals. Molly, along with a male partner, has been publishing strong female protagonists for more than two years. <laughs> Let me tell you more. SFP, and I'm quoting, quote, follows the adventures of a young middle-class American with super strength, invincibility, and a crippling sense of social injustice, rather like Congressman Lewis. A feminist superhero who uses her powers to fight poverty and inequality. How, how cool is that? Molly plans to keep living in Brooklyn and keep publishing, celebrating with her today are her parents, Neil and Wes, and her boyfriend, Jack. I am delighted to present our BFA speaker, Molly Ostertag. Hi, <laughs> thank you, Jeff Neeson, for your kind introduction. President David Rhodes, Executive Vice President Anthony Rhodes, members of the board, department chairs, distinguished guest Congressman John Lewis, parents, friends, and my graduating class of 2014, it is such an honor to be chosen to represent you. <laughs> For this speech, I was trying to pinpoint what we all have in common, and it's kind of tricky. Some of us make complicated abstract art, and others are trained to make accessible mass media. Some of us make art alone in a studio, and others need to be part of a larger team. We think in terms of lines and colors, or in three dimensions, or in sound and time. So what do we all have in common? Well, I think that we all are artists, and we're also are all a part of the generation called the millennials. While that's a really annoying term that's used as a bad word in articles about our generation, I believe it's also our strength. We grew up with the internet and home computers. Over our lifetimes, we watched that technology integrate itself into every aspect of our lives. This fast change is scary to lots of people, I'm sure. Everyone has read articles about how our generation has shorter attention spans, how we're addicted to our smartphones, and how we're gonna bring about the apocalypse. But <laughs> moving past all that and getting to art, no matter what you do, your field is changing in some way. I'm sure you've had the experience of hearing about a teacher's journey to success in their field and realizing that the path they took to the top doesn't exist anymore. Traditional established gatekeepers are being undermined by the fact that technology lets nearly anyone make art. You can find an audience for your work in a way that's never been possible before. Art is becoming more democratic, and this means two things. First, people are not going to stop making cat videos. <laughs> but it's good news even if you don't want to make cat videos. Because second, suddenly, there's room for new voices, stories that have never been told, opinions and ideas that weren't mainstream enough to be sponsored by artistic institutions can find an audience. Some opportunities are destroyed by advancing technology, but more are opening up. Our generation is in a position to carve out niches and create genres that don't even exist yet. So, anyone can make and distribute art. Was it crazy of us to go to art school? To follow our dream and graduate from SVA, we needed the support of people around us. Family, friends, parents, and partners. I'd like to thank them now with a round of applause. The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wow is a beautiful novel by Juno Diaz. There's a moment in it that I'd like to share. Oscar remembers having a dream where a mongoose was chatting with him. What will it be, muchacho? It demanded. More or less? 
and for a moment, he almost said less. I believe that we all make this choice at some point in our lives. Do we engage more with life, pay closer attention, and push ourselves to the breaking point to create something original? Or do we coast on the surface? I don't think we would be here today if we chose to have less in life. We committed to our dream. We spent four years, give or take, experimenting, training, and refining. We chose to make a life of this, not a hobby. And for four years, we had the necessary luxury of making bad art, weird art, of copying that one artist and hoping no one would find out. And then we threw that bad art out because it was a part of our learning process. SVA was our incubation period. No matter what you studied here, you spent time discovering your voice, style, and taste. And it's never been a better time in the art world to have a voice that hasn't been heard before. I hope you're all as excited about the future as I am. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. Thank you, Molly.